QLC Plus Virtual Console Faders. Okay, so this is a, a look at the Virtual Console feature of this software. You get there by clicking on Virtual Console. As you can see, I've already con um, created a Virtual Console with some faders and some other parts to it. What the Virtual Console is, is you get to create a console and make it look the way that you would like it to look with faders, knobs, buttons, etc. You determine the layout, you determine what each item on the layout controls. So it's very, very, very flexible. Find it to be very, very handy. So let me just talk about it a little bit. So uh, as I mentioned here, I've, I've already pre-done a layout and if this layout is if you download my generic 100 setup, this is what you're going to come up with in your virtual console. Uh, basically with this layout here, each one of these sliders would control a DMX channel. So this is the fader for DMX channel 1, DMX channel 2, DMX channel 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. I've got up to 50 here. My next page goes from DMX channel 51 to 100. And then my next page actually has some operational things like cue list and buttons. But so uh, raising these faders would cause those DMX values to be output. Now one thing you want to be aware of when you're in virtual console, and we haven't talked about this before, right now we are in edit mode. So we can go in and edit any of these controls or change them around, change colors, change text, that kind of thing. To go into run mode, you simply go up here to the green arrow on the right and click on it. It now turns red to let you know that you are in run mode. So now raising these faders is actually outputting DMX information. So for example, I've just output uh, DMX information to DMX channel 18 to increase. All right, and I've done my design here that so that these show percentage. You can do them percentage or you can do them as uh, DMX values, whatever you find works best for you. All right, so clicking this again puts me back in edit mode. I don't know how many times I've told you that I, I, I myself have gone to run this and gone like this, go, oops, I oh, forgot I was in edit mode. I'm kind of moving my things around here. So you have to remember that green, you're in edit mode, and if you want to go into run mode, click it, it goes to red. Vice versa, if I go in to try to edit things now, it's not going to edit because I'm in run mode, so you need to make sure you check this and go back to green. Okay, um, so yeah, numbers of things up here, sliders, buttons, knobs, um, clock, etc., etc. you can add it. Let's take a look at these faders that I've added, and actually, before we do that, you can see that I put all of these faders inside of a frame and that's a handy thing to do uh, because then you can control what happens with the frame. And if I double click up here in the header of the frame, it tells me a couple things. Uh, the, the general things about the frame, it accepts child widgets, allows for resizing, which I did. Uh, show the enable button, which is up here. I've told it that I want to enable multiple pages, told it that I want three pages. There's some more information down here where I could actually use a, an external MIDI controller or OSC controller and actually uh, remotely operate these um, and, and actually change pages and everything. I don't have any of that synced up right now because we're not going to be get involved with that. That's kind of advanced. But know that we can do multiple pages there. Um, so what they talked about is the this button here. If I click that, that whole thing disappears. It's another handy thing. Instead of using multiple pages, I could have done uh, three separate frames. And when you click this, the, the item, the frame shrinks down or minimizes. And when you click this, the frame maximizes. And I could have stacked them in here. You know, it's up to you, whatever design-wise you want to do. So let's take a look at these faders here. So I'm in my design or edit mode. If I double click on this fader, it brings up some information. It's a slider, it's not a knob. I've asked for the display to be percentage and not actual DMX value. Um, the slider movement is going to be normal, which means it goes from bottom to top and not top to bottom, although you can invert it. And I do have some values in here, so this can be actually operated from an external um, controller, such as my iPad. Let's take a look at level. This is going to tell us what dimmer this is controlling or what dimmers it's controlling. You can actually do more than one. Um, DMX channel being controlled by one slider. So right now I'm controlling this front of house one, the dimmer associated with that. Um, I'll go to back and so I'm going to do some editing here because 
as we look, well, let, let's, let me get ahead. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's look at two. And we can say that that's controlling front of house two. Let's look at three. And now it's controlling this one. And I don't have any light attached to that. So it kind of becomes cluttered because I've got two lights and then these aren't working and then I have a light on DMX channel 5 and maybe one here and then another two that aren't. So it would actually be better if I just assign the lights that I actually have plugged into DMX channels to these sliders so I don't have a bunch of sliders in between that really aren't controlling anything. And so you can feel free to go ahead and edit this any way you would like. So let's take a look here. I'm going to double click on one. First of all, I'm going to name this front of house one. So I know that's my front of house one light and we're already connected to there. So I'm good to go. You see the name changed on it. Let's rename this front of house two. And level, I am connected to front of house two. We're good there. So I'm, that's working. Now this one here, we're going to go front of house three level and it's it's connected to this and I don't have a light actually plugged into that DMX so I'm going to go down here where it's front of house 3 disconnect that one by click it connect this one and say okay so now this is outputting to that particular DMX channel let's do this one here front of house 4 so now you can see too while it's important when you're doing your fixtures to give them names and labels so it's easier to find them I'm going to do front of house 4 here I mean because I can look and say, okay, I don't remember what dimmer channel this is, but I've got it labeled. So that's my front of house four light. So there we go. Let's do front of house five here. So FOH five. And I want it to control front of house five, which is here. And then front of house six, label it. And the level, I want it to control this guy down here. Okay, so now it makes a lot more sense, the layout, because I have my six front of house lights here right underneath my fingertips I can use. Um, if I go into run mode and I bring up my display, we did for the lighting here, as I raise these faders, you'll see them come on one at a time. And as I said, these are kind of the, the 2D display actually tries to display the dimmer, the intensity by getting brighter and dimmer doesn't give you actual values, but at least you've got some indication there of what's going on. So that works great. Now, if you want to, if you're kind of old school and you'd really like to program from here, you can actually do that. And there is a way to do that. So, well, let me bring that display back up. Let's say we're programming. So I want my front of house lights up something that looks like that. I got that look in there. I can click up here on the scene button. Now it brings up and I can call this, let's say call it scene 10. Scene 10 and um, dump selected channel. We can either dump all the channels, which I'll show you what that looks like. Let's do that one. That's usually not what you want to do is dump all and I'll show you why you probably don't want to do that. While we're at this at the same time, we can automatically add this to the main queue list or we can add it to a button that we've already created. We can add it to a slider that we've created somewhere if we want to too. So you could actually use, you could actually put scenes on sliders and then like do crossfades where you slide in one scene and slide out the other if you don't want to go like totally old school. But I'll click OK. Um, I'm going to uh, create another scene here. Let's add these in and say, OK, let's dump this scene. Let's call this scene 11. Okay, and this time I'm going to say dump selected channels, but what's very, very important is dump only non-zero values. And again, I could add it to my main queue list, my button, slider, whatever I want to do. Click OK. All right, let's uh, turn these off. Get out of run mode, and let's go back to the functions and see what we've done here. So there's our scene 10 and our scene 11. There's our scene 10. All right. And we've got front of house one, two, three included in there. And then here's our scene 11. And we've got front of house one, two, three, four, and five included in there. If we had done, done, done um, dump all values, 
as long as you go down the bottom and select dump only non-zero values, that'll help bring that up for you. So that otherwise, you would end up with all 100 dimmers listed here, which makes it really, really difficult. But if you want to do that old school the way that we just did, then you can actually create scenes this way. And um, now the only problem is that remember, let's go back to the scene 10. If you if you looked at my uh, functions and scene creating video, this scene 10 has no fade in, fade out value, so we still have to do that. Three in, three out, kind of give it the default. And scene 11 here, three in, three out. Okay, uh, let's save this. So you can see how that works, and you can actually use the virtual console if you want to kind of do old school and push faders up and then save the scene and then go back and just do a little bit of editing in your function menu. Then, you know, once we've created the scene 10 and 11, you remember our main queue list over here. We can go ahead and bring in scene 10 if we want to. Uh, let's say scene 10 is the next scene here. We bring it in. We add some timing to that because now we're in the queue list. Uh, fade in three, fade out one. And then we want to add scene 11 in here. Add that to the main queue list. So scene 11's in there. Give it some fade in, fade out times because we're in the queue list. Fade in to fade out zero because we're going to go right to a blackout. I'll take my blackout, copy it down here, paste it. Good. Boom. I've added my new scenes into there. So either way that you want to do it, it works either way.